Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you three benefits to recording a mono room mic on drums. We're gonna be talking about mono room mics today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to take your snare tone to the next level and really start dialing in your recording strategy, then I have just the thing for you. It is my essential guide to recording snare drum, and it's a simple PDF that will walk you through everything you need to know from mic choice to mic position to setting your input gain to get a polished and professional sounding snare drum without any more guesswork and without any more of the hassle. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at this mono room mic. Let me start by playing you the finished mix here. You can hear the drums inside the finished mix. Then I'll solo up just the kit by itself. You can hear what the kit sounds like. Then we'll kind of zone in here on our mono room mic and I'll play you what that sounds like by itself inside the mix here. So here's our finished mix. You can hear how our drums sit inside the song. That's our mono room mic there. So that's just a mono room mic. It's literally just the vocal mic I have in the booth back here. That's about a couple feet out in front of the kit, uh, about mouth level for my height. So maybe five, five and a half feet up in the air there. Um, so it's not a really crucial mic, but for me, it, prevent, it pre presents a couple different options when it comes mixing time for drums. And I wanna show you the benefits you can get from recording a mono room mic like this. So the first way you could use it is simply keeping it as natural as possible, but still a couple things on here. First thing I usually put on this mono room mic is an EQ. I roll off the super, super lows here, and I roll off a lot of the top end. I don't want any kind of cymbal noise or any of that harsh top end in my room mic. I wanna be able to pull it up and hear it thicken up my kit and give it some room sound without, get, without it getting too crazy on the top end. I'm gonna get my cymbal noise from my overheads and of course some bleed from the kick and snare as we boost top end. I don't want any of that coming through this mono room mic. We're gonna keep it pretty low midly just to add some thickness to our kit here. And then of course I do do a big cut here in the low mid so it's not muddy. We wanna add thickness, not mud. Okay, so that's why we have this big cut here. I wanna take off our next plugin and we'll just AB just this EQ here. So here is our mono room mic and I'll AB this EQ for you here. Wiping out all of that crazy cymbal noise there, that hi-hat sound, the, the crash hits. Getting rid of that low mud there. And then just a little boost here at 80 to bring out some of the, the heaviness in the kick drum because we're already getting some thickness in our snare drum by rolling off that top end and pulling it up. So this gives us a little bit more thickness on our kick drum and on our snare drum there around the 200 hertz area. Let me play you just the drum kit here and I'll AB our room mic. Uh, as it is here. So this is one of the ways I use it, which is pretty natural sounding, uh, nothing too crazy here. Uh, and then I do have this compressor after it as well. So this is just a, uh, a Fairchild emulation, just doing a little bit here. Let me play you, play you that.
gives us a little bit of balance there on our kick and snare to make sure uh, one's not so far above the other. So here's inside the kit and I will pull in and out this room mic. You can hear what it adds to the kit in uh, this way. For me, it adds a little bit of thickness in the low mid area. It gives me some nice mid range on the kick drum as well uh, in this upper area that we haven't cut out. So kind of this 1K, 2K area, we get a little bit, little bit of that coming through on the kick drum, but overall it helps to thicken up the kit in a more lively way. So it's not just boosting uh, low mids on our kick and on our snare across the mix like that. It's a little bit of liveliness because it is a room mic pulled back from the kit. So this is the first way you could implement a mono room mic. The second way is if we nuke this compressor here, we're gonna pull in another fat channel here and we're gonna squash this mono room mic. We'll solo back to the mono room mic. This is something I like to do sometimes if I need to add more energy with the mono room mic. You can pull in, I like to use this 1176 style compressor, go all buttons in, slowest release, slowest attack, sorry, and fastest release. And we're gonna do like 10 dB of compression here. So much more energy coming from this room mic. It feels like it's a lot more intense, right? We get more attack from our kick and our snare, and we get a little bit more of the room sound because we're crushing everything down. So it kind of enhances or exaggerates the room sound we're getting because it is a small room, makes it feel a little bit bigger uh, than it is in reality here. All we're doing here, again, all buttons in on this compressor, slowest attack, fastest release. That's how we're exaggerating uh, the transient on our kick and snare and getting more attack from them because the compressor doesn't react till a little bit after our, our initial transient on our kick and our snare there. And then the 10, 10 dB of compression helps to hold everything in, right? We're crushing everything down so it enhances that room sound, makes things feel a little bit bigger. So let's put this mic now, uh, or this version of the microphone inside the kit as a whole and I will AB uh, this, we'll pull it in and out here. To me, the most noticeable difference, the thing that grabbed my ear as I pulled uh, the mic up further and further into the drum mix was the ghosting on the snare. This room mic that's compressed this far really brought up the ghosts on the snare and gave energy to the snare drum that way. It gave a little bit more attack to the kick drum and of course on our normal snare hits, but it really brought up 
uh, the snare ghosts inside the room mic like that, which was very, very cool, adding energy in a different way to our kit there. So this is the second way you could use a mono room mic. You could simply throw a compressor on it and crush it, and just crush it, uh, make sure you get some more attack at it. So slowest attack, fastest release, that's gonna enhance your attack and enhance your room sound by doing this much compression. So that's your second way there. The third way you could do it here is by pulling in a distortion plugin. This is something you can do if you need more aggression from your kit, if you're trying to make a drum kit sound meaner. Adding a mono room mic and distorting it is a nice way to get some of that kind of mean and aggressive vibe here. So this is just the red light distortion plugin inside of Studio One. We're gonna distort this room mic and see if we can get it pretty, pretty aggressive sounding. That's sounding really good to me there. So all I did was I put it on the second stage here. It is on the hard tube type, so it's a little bit more aggressive. Not using the filters at all. No need to do that because we have our EQ beforehand. And bear in mind, if you're gonna crush it, whether it's with compression or distortion, having this uh, this roll off here on the top end is very, very helpful to make sure, sure your cymbals don't get too nasty or they don't get too loud uh, when you're compressing it so much with the compressor. Put, pushing the drive up here to about 7.7. .7. It's helping to distort the snare drum in a really nice way, and we get a little bit of that distortion on the top end and the bottom end of our kick drum there, but our kick drum still sounds big, it still sounds full. Same thing with our snare drum. We still have a, not a, a lot of nice low mids on it, which is really, really nice. And again, because we don't have that um, all that top end in there, uh, rolling it off with our EQ, we're not getting any nasty cymbal sounds. It's really nice, it really tightened up the room sound, which is pretty cool, and it evened everything out, so our kick and snare are kind of hitting at the same level. One more time, I'm gonna play this by itself, and then we'll put it in the kit here. All right, let's put it inside the entire kit here. So here's our drum kit, and I'll pull in and out this room mic, and we'll kind of mess with the level to see what happens as we push it up higher in the mix here. That added quite, quite a bit of fullness to our kit without it. That was probably the, the most drastic way for me. When I pulled it out, when I got rid of that room mic in the kit, there was like this huge empty space. The kit felt so much smaller. So adding in the distortion, the distortion track or distorting our mono room mic really helped the kit sound really big and really energetic, add a lot of intenseness and aggression to the kit. It helped to make our snare drum feel a little bit more aggressive and it added a lot of bigness to the kick drum actually, which was surprising. I thought it would affect our kick drum in a negative way because we're adding some distortion to the low end, but it didn't. It really made the kick drum sound bigger as well as the kit as a whole. It added so, so much energy. So let's do a little bit of recap here. We'll just turn that guy off. So 
Here's our minimalistic way, just our EQ, a little bit of compression here from the Fairchild just to hold things in place. So we'll start here, then we'll switch to this guy here, which is our parallel, not parallel compression. So we're squashing our room mic with compression. Then we'll go to our red light distortion, so distortion on the room mic. Those are the three ways we're covering here. Pretty minimalistic, keeping it natural, then over compressing our room mic, so crushing it with this 1176, then distorting our room mic. So we'll start here and I'll kind of go through each of them. So those are the three ways you can use a mono room mic to enhance your drum kit sound. Just the simplistic way here, just our EQ and a little bit of compression from this Fairchild helps to give a little bit more punch to our kick and our snare, keeps them even right, we get a little bit of thickness on both. Our second way here is using this 1176 to absolutely squash the mono room mic. Slowest attack, fastest release, gives us a little bit more attack on our kick and our snare, and it helps to enhance the room sound and make it feel a little bit bigger, even though it is just a mono room mic. Third way here is by using a distortion plugin on the mono room mic. This was actually the most surprising to me. It was the biggest difference in and out of the mix. It made the whole kit feel bigger and a lot more full. Without it, it felt like there was an empty space that needed to be filled. So if you're looking to add some intensity and some bigness to your kit, definitely try some distortion on your mono room mic. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to level up your snare recordings and really start honing your workflow as a recording engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my essential guide to recording snare drum and you can download it below to start creating more professional snare recordings in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.